So, as you can probably tell, I've been able to fit the new exhaust onto the Interceptor 650. Let's jump to the garage so I can show you what exhaust I picked and how to fit it. And this is the exhaust that I went for. It is the short shot from sold out motorcycles. Now this has been in development. It's actually been refined. They've changed some of the design of this and the way it's put together. And this is their kind of first version of this, uh, which has gone into production. This is effectively a straight through exhaust, but there is obviously a perforated tube and some uh, packing inside this which will help to keep things quiet. They are I believe working on a couple of different variations one which will have a removable baffle that goes in and out of the back there that's not quite ready yet and I think there's going to be another version with a honeycomb section in this tube here just again to help keep things quiet. Now I don't know if this is going to be overly noisy the only way is to fit it and find out uh, so we'll get onto that in a moment but it is a beautifully machined piece full stainless steel uh, the welding on it is superb these are all made by hand in the UK uh, nothing gets shipped out to China or overseas so to find a UK made piece um, that can go on the bike is really good and the quality is just exceptional uh, but I'm excited to get it on it comes as two separate parts. There is also a spacer so that you can mount this tab onto the stock mount, which is the first mount you've got in the exhaust. That will become clear as we have a look at it. And it comes with a new crush washer for the uh, top of the header and uh, all of the fitting. The job, as I say, is pretty quick. Uh, the removal of the existing exhaust is pretty simple. We haven't got any link pipes or anything like that on this bike, so it's two separate sides get this on we'll have a look at it we'll have a listen to it and more importantly i've got the scales out to see how much difference in weight there is because i think this is going to be a substantial saving so let's crack on so obviously the starting point is the end can to get this off so we've got one bolt here to pull that away from the mount uh, we don't have to worry about the two bolts on the back there because we don't need this mount this can come off with the silencer then we've got this shield to come off and uh, another bolt there and then we can just slide that out of the way. So not the easiest thing to see but under here is a 10 mil bolt and with that bolt out of the way this will just slide, it might be a bit tight but it'll slide off there. You've got a little latch with a rubber mount here and here to hold that into place. That then exposes this bolt which is the clamp that holds the end can on so once that's loosened we can take the other main bolt off and slide it out of the way completely. That should be loose enough. And then we've got the same at the top here. 12 mil on the bolt on the back. Okay, if you take the weight there, remove that bolt, we now in theory should be able to just slide that off giving that a wiggle to get it loosened off and there we go well I can already feel that there's quite a bit of weight in there I think that weighs more than the header and the uh, silencer of the new system combined but uh, I'll get that on the scales and see where we are and then I'll come back and get the rest of this off you can take this bung out of here because we won't be needing those uh, and that's one area where this exhaust has a slight drawback is that you still have this part here ordinarily I'd probably look at having that cut off because I won't be needing it again or having it converted to a bolt-on but I might have another solution for this up my sleeve uh, in a later video but for now we'll just leave that as it is Sticking the end can on the scales with the shield and the bolts and washers and everything, you can see it came in at 5.1 kilos. So I'll do this for each part as we go through and then we'll be able to see the end result and the difference between the two at the end of the video. Next up is the mid mount here and this is where the main exhaust is going to be mounted uh, when we come to put the new one back on. And this is a 12 mil bolt as well. That can come out and 
take the top hat out as well. So we've got nothing fixed and then we can get up to the front end. We've got this O2 sensor that we need to take out to put into the new one, but actually with these fins, it's easier to take the header off uh, so that you can move this down a little bit to get to this from the other side because it's really difficult otherwise to get a spanner onto it. Uh, so it's just the header nut here and below. And again, it's always nice with Royal Enfield. Uh, so easy to work on. Again, it's another 12 mil bolt, so I'm not having to continually swap sizes. I've just got a longer reach arm on this so that I can get to it. And as you can see, just using this long arm gives me that little bit of extra reach. We will reuse these nuts. So there you go, with those undone, we'll be able to slide that off the end there. Now you can see we've got a much easier access to the O2 sensor. What we've then got to do is delve that crush washer out of here put the new one in from the kit and then get the new header on. The O2 sensor is a 14 mil. This is pretty chunky as well, to be honest. So I'm gonna put this on the scales too, then we can get a total measurement for the side, uh, compare that to the new one. And then just to put it back on, obviously it's a reverse process. Removing the crush washer is a little bit fiddly, but if you manoeuvre a screwdriver in there to try to loosen it up, then a set of needle nose pliers, something similar, you get hold of it. And this is actually split, there you go. Ah, this is split because it's got, it's been smashed in there so far, but there you go. Make sure the face is nice and clean. So if we fish out the O2 sensor, that's gonna go back into there. What you have to do is to remember to put a little bit of twist that way onto it so that when you put it in, you've got a little bit of slack. There we go, that's the O2 sensor in. So there we go, we pop the crush washer in there. Line up the bracket. Just want to get that in there so that it's roughly in place. Now what I've done here is because this silencer sits where the original header would have been and is a bit thicker, I've just had to move my scissor, scissor jack in a little bit further to give it clearance. This spacer and the longer bolt that comes in the kit, so that spacer goes in there, bolt goes to the outside. So it's just a case of sliding that on. It's a really lovely fit. You don't need anything inside there. You don't need any exhaust paste or anything. Then put the spacer behind. Just put the longer bolt through and you can line that up. And then with an Allen key, which I forgot to get, I'll go and get that. Sorry about that, slight technical hitch of not having my tools ready. Use a bigger Allen key, oh, for fuck's sake. At this point, I decided to switch to an Allen key in a socket set, and for some reason, my microphone packed up. So this is me just tightening that bolt, making sure the exhaust is nice and rigid. And then this is me explaining to you that I'm not gonna show you the process on the other side because it's exactly the same as this side.
So as you can see, a really easy exhaust to fit, nice simple job. The exhaust really well made, the quality of the manufacturing is fantastic, everything fit exactly as it should do. It is a little bit noisy, if you don't want to attract attention, uh, you can just pull the clutch in and then obviously it's very quiet. But there's no denying it is a little bit of a noisy exhaust. Some people are going to like that, some people are not going to like that. In terms of performance, I've not really noticed any change in the bike. Obviously with the DNA filter that I've got on this, and now obviously much reduced back pressure on the exhaust. It's probably going to need a little bit of sorting out. You can kind of leave them running and the ECU will, will kind of get used to the airflow. The sensors will do their job. However, I have been having a chat to the guys at BHP UK and uh, I think we're going to try to get the bike to them so that they can get it on their machinery and uh, give it a quick remap. Not necessarily to pull any more power out of it because it's not really going to make much difference. The air filter and the, and the exhaust combined, you'll maybe get two or three horsepower, maybe a little bit more. And the one big thing obviously is the weight saving the looks and the sound so they're not really going to be tuning the bike to kind of squeeze more performance out of it just to get the best tune they can for this smooth things out a little bit make sure that we've got no flat spots in it once we've got that sorted out if we can get that organized then uh, I'll do another video just to um, show you exactly what happened what changes that made and if it does really make any real world changes to the bike but uh, other than that I'm really pleased with it I think it looks great by the time now I start to get some of the other bits and pieces on there once we get rid of that big tail light and indicators neaten everything up I've got a new seat ready to come I've got suspension uh, we've got a lot of sorting out to do at the front end it may well get a paint job as well we'll have to wait and see but there's a lot going on hopefully over the winter it's a good opportunity to get there and get these things done I just thought I'd take the opportunity of a nice sunny day today to come out and let you uh, hear the bike. Oh my god. If you like loud, rorty sounding exhaust, then you're going to love these. Not only do they, I think, look really good on the bike, there's a massive weight saving as well and you do really notice that. The bike feels much more lively in terms of its handling. But it sounds incredible as well. But yeah, brilliant piece of kit, really well engineered. The good thing is that everything is made here in the UK. So it's good to be able to support a British business. Um, but that's it for now. So if you've got any questions, then you know where to leave those in the comment section down below. And all that leaves me to say is, until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.